We have a very short amount of time, so I'm going to go through this really quite fast. But uh, what what we're looking at today is really just two things. Uh, uh, virtual and augmented reality that I did in a project last year, uh, an international project last year, and it's free and you can do it. You can actually uh, do it right now as an educator. And then I'm just going to speak very briefly. Uh, I'm, I'm the uh, multimedia production team manager. Uh, we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the tools that uh, we use uh, in, in the everyday running of the uh, multimedia production unit, and you can use those too. Um, so the very first thing is the reality of mixed reality. So mixed reality is virtual reality or augmented reality. Virtual reality, you put a some sort of headset over your face, you see something completely different, you're fully immersed in that world. Augmented reality, you usually hold up a device and you can look through that device and various things will be happening uh, over the content of that device. I love to use the um, uh, the Matrix and the Terminator as examples. So uh, in the, the Terminator, when the Terminator is trying to find clothes in that bar, if anyone's seen the film, he is looking around uh, at everyday life and he's seeing an overlay uh, of, you know, this guy's this tall, you know, these clothes might fit, whatever, that's augmented reality. Whereas uh, the matrix, you know, when you're in the matrix, you see nothing else. You're you're in virtual reality, a very, you know, grand version of them. Now, the reason that I uh, actually did this project, so which took me around the world uh, last year, is because the reality of mixed reality in education does not match uh, what is promised. It's always promised, uh, you know, gleaming classrooms full of students with headsets on like this and everything works and it's perfect and that's just not the reality so that's not not bashing virtual reality my phd was uh, about virtual reality uh, but it's saying that uh, it's fallen far short of what was promised uh, in education so what we can do is super simple cheap versions uh, of virtual augmented reality i'm only putting this um uh publication in if the um presentation gets sent out because uh, i uh, i created a not inflammatory at all, uh, titled Virtual Reality Has Failed Education. So what should we do with it? And that went on the uh, Times Higher Ed. A lot of people got cranky, particularly vendors. But what did I actually do? I went to uh, five uh, different countries with five very different uh, educators and their students. Um, some were, you know, traditional uh, university uh, educators, as you'd expect. Others were, you know, working in the, the health system based in hospitals. Uh, and, and another lady that I worked with was uh, at a, essentially a drop-in centre in Cambodia. But she performed uh, the role of, of educator. So uh, I identified with these educators uh, issues in their uh, pedagogy that were absent of technology. It's, it's often... Often if you, what's that line? Uh, if you only have a uh, hammer, everything looks like a nail. So there are some people, a lot of people that go, let's VR everything. And it's it's simply not feasible or uh, effective in a, a huge amount uh, of um, of situations, including education. So I asked these uh, educators to consider uh, what problems they have with their education and their pedagogy. And I decided uh, if, if the very simple options that uh, I uh, was proposing might help. And it did. So um, I worked with them to uh, to develop a solution, I won't go into it here, to deliver with their, their students. Uh, they were using mobile phones and um, a free website, which, which I'll detail. Um, the process was work with the educators to understand the main issues they face, determine whether the simple VR and AR tech might provide a solution. We will talk about the tech in a second. Assist them through the process of those educators developing and delivering the solution to their students because I'm only going to be there for you know a week or something. Uh, and then put together resources, which we're going to, um, we've already seen in some presentations and also in a course that I'm creating. So uh, I am looking at time. I'll just talk about the technology and then I'll, I'll briefly show you uh, some of it action. So this is what we used. Uh, this is all free. No, it's, sorry, free asterisks. I hate it when people do that, but uh, free asterisks. It's it's relying on you having some sort of uh, mobile phone. Uh, reasonably modern mobile phone. I think everyone's got one of those. And up the top right-hand corner, you can see these little uh, lenses. I don't want to call them glasses because they're not really. Um, they're just lenses that will fit over your mobile phone. And when you've created the content correctly, it will... So you, a very simple version of virtual reality. So um, we, uh, in general, I'm being, I'm being very broad here. In general, we had uh, an educator asking students to create what are, what are called photospheres. And these photospheres are, uh, they're just literally 360 degree photos. So imagine taking a photo um, that captures the entire room. Uh, you know, top, bottom, uh, all these different sides, you actually get a sense of immersion when you're in it. And it's with a, a free app that Google had, which doesn't exist anymore, but there's, a, there's others. 
The students then also created uh, voice memos where essentially um, they were um, asked to describe why did they choose the particular thing they were photographing or, you know, why did they choose the part of the centre in, in Cambodia that they were documenting. And then we put it together in this website, you can see on the left called Expeditions Pro, uh, put the 360 degree stills and also these voice memos describing those stills uh, into Expeditions Pro. And then it was played back on the phone with these little headsets, sorry, with these little uh, lenses over the top. Uh, and it created a very simple uh, visual presentation with, with audio. So it's kind of probably the most base model um, the virtual reality you can get, but it was effective. Uh, we also used Adobe Aero, which is a, a free app, which is part of the, uh, the suite that we have access to at the university. And that was to create augmented reality. But I'm gonna show you how it actually works. So I'm not gonna play this whole video. This, um, this lady, Sam Walker, she was, um, she runs a, a youth resource center in Cambodia. Uh, she wanted the students to be more creative. And also they weren't particularly aware of uh, their city, Siem Reap, uh, that they were in. So I'll, I'll just show a little tiny bit of the video. I think it's about 30 seconds in. And you the can see the action. We do, and many of them have not encouragement to oh, do please this. Oh. Okay. I've actually not had any experience with virtual reality in the past. This is my first time, so it's really interesting. The students here are going to uh, create photospheres. It's the first time they've ever had any experience doing something like this. So they're going to be creating scenes from within Spinchivit and looking at uh, different ways that they can incorporate storytelling. They're also doing voiceover sound pieces. So they'll be learning how to not just create a visual story, but overlap it with an audio story as well. And then they're going to present. Well, leave it at that. Um, that's what the students did. It was absolutely fantastic. And look at that student's face. Like I just love seeing a happy student because she was, you know, making this thing work. It was very exciting. The Maybe the other one that we deal with whoops, here. I thought. The other one was uh, Tiasha, and this was in uh, Brzice in Slovenia. Um, so we were uh, primarily working with augmented reality with Tiasha, uh, and she her, her um, desire was that she has tourism students, because she teaches tourism, uh, be able to create uh, hints of various um, tourist locations by using these tools. So the, the example you're going to see here is augmented reality, and you just see it very briefly and it will show you it in action. I'm teaching courses mm -hmm. on augmented or virtual reality content because this is very important digital skill to have, especially in tourism, because we can mainly use it for the promotion purposes. They will create with different free apps, they will create the, uh, the content by themselves. We will visit some um, cultural heritage here in Brezhica and they will create the virtual and augmented reality content. All right, that's, that is all I'm going to show of Jasta today. There's some really interesting outcomes. I won't go into those, so I'll, uh, I'll come later. But the important thing is it is free, asterisk, uh, free to, uh, to create. Those little uh, lenses are about $5 to $10 each, depending on how fancy you uh, you want to use them. You can get away with just a couple uh, of those per classroom because your students can hand them around and everyone has a mobile phone. Everything else was free. There was some really, uh, really interesting outcomes. The multimedia production team using generative AI, we use it all the time. Uh, people are over the years, because I came from a production background, uh, and every time there was a, an advance in software uh, or in, in making a video production easier, people were always like, well, you'd be out of a job. And I was like, okay, and it didn't happen. Very same thing has happened with uh, with generative AI. Now, there are certain things that uh, it is much faster at doing. Uh, and is that a threat or is it just simply augmenting our work? So this is a, a project that we're doing with Professor Margaret Kettle. Uh, it's It involves creating workbooks for uh, students in um, Education Queensland, and the workbooks had a lot of hand-drawn uh, cartoon elements because they're for students that uh, don't from uh, that have English as a second language. Um, so what we wanted to do was create these these students in uh, in various environments with generative AI, and it works. It looks this this looks fantastic. The problem that we had though was um, character con consistency. So basically, from one frame of a, a, a workbook to another frame, it was very very hard to get you know a student on a skateboard here and then that same student sitting at a desk there. So there was a lot of twiddling that we had to work on there. But Midjourney uh, was the the tool that we used. That's a, a sort of an image 
imagey uh, gen AI, I suppose you call it, and it was much faster than uh, the original author uh, was going to draw full scenes. It was fantastic. Um, we also use um, content format conversions. So an example we have here, oh, this is for another conference, an example we have here, convert the following conference abstract to HTML. And away it went. So basically it was just an abstract and this was turned into a HTML and then you can paste it into web tools, whatever you're working with. Uh, it's it's not perfect. You, uh, you sometimes need to break it down into little pieces. Um, next one is we can build web components because Rolly uh, is a web developer. He's always programming mainly. Uh, you can build parts of web components to create uh, essentially entire apps or entire web apps. Uh, so an example, update my component to do the following. You describe in detail the functionality required any te technical requ requirements. You paste that into your code, see if it works. And more times than uh, not, it does work. Our daily uses of generative AI, this is my last slide, by the way, our daily uses of general AI, we are always using um, text-based gener generative AI to uh, you know tweak this, fix this, make this sound better, Cut 500 words from this, but don't mess up the uh, the, the meaning of, of what we have here. In data, there's a lot of spreadsheet work you can see. Uh, technical converting formats like we saw before, writing code, improving or extending code, math calculations, obviously it's good for that. General content, like I said, uh, editing, text docs, content sentiment analysis, you can say make this sound more formal, uh, chuck an email in there and say, does this sound rude? Uh, I want this to sound more professional. Um, querying documents. If you use um, Google Notebook, it is unbelievable for chucking in a bunch of uh, publications and saying, just give me the top line summary, you know, three points from each of these documents, and it does it. You have to check. You absolutely have to check because it does hallucinate. We know that. Um, and then in, in terms of uh, traditional media, it can absolutely create um, new images or it can edit images in various programs that we use. Repairing voice recording, Adobe, uh, just, just make a note if you're interested in this, Adobe, Podcast, I think, is the uh, the search that you would find the Adobe tool that is uncanny in how it can make not very good audio that perhaps was just supplied to us, or maybe we had a technical problem, turns it into studio quality audio. It's amazing, and also a lot of a lot of times we see um, you can't do it with video yet; it's coming. But uh, people will often send extremely small uh, images and say, "Can you make this? You know, can you chuck this in our 4K video, or can we, you know, print this uh, really, really large?" and Previously, no, it would just look hideous, but uh, with AI, you absolutely can. All right, that's me. Any questions? Terminator was on three doing on Monday night. Good, very good point. <laughs> if there are no questions, or if they're going to wait till later, then uh, I might hand over. Oh, Sorry, someone's I've, got a question? Just, yeah, I've just got one quick question. So if people were um, interested in um, using say, some AR tools, um, is there information on that somewhere? So can they? There will be a course, hopefully, uh, up by the end of the year or start oh. of next year, where I have three one-hour uh, pieces, which are really just talking about this is how you do it. Like, I'll show oh, people how to do it. Or they can drop me a line, uh, m.bert oh, at cpu.edu. Okay, thank you for that. Thanks. More? Sorry, it's Penny. No? Yeah, I've got a question. Hello, Penny. Hey, um, I'm just wondering where you said that they can fix a voice recording. Um, in an interview I did, one of the people was really, um, it was a one-on-one, -on -one, but they were doing it in a busy tea room. Um, and so it was really hard to understand. I sent it off to Pacific Transcription and they had difficulty working it out as well. Would that be something that I could try? 100%, 100%. I mean, I haven't heard it, so I don't know how bad it is. But uh, just literally, first thing, just Google um, Adobe Podcast. I'm pretty sure that's what they call it now. It keeps changing its name. Uh, if you've got access to the Adobe Suite, log in with your CQ uh, account, and it's literally just take the file, upload it, and then you can you can tweak the intensity of the uh, fix that they make to it. If you make it too far, everyone sounds like a robot. Uh, but there'll be a, a nice little sort of in-between um which is kind of shocking where you go, how did it do that? But if you have any issues at all, just send it to me, m.bert at cku.edu and I'll, I'll have a look as well. Beautiful. But it is simple. It's literally upload it and then, you know, pull a slider to, uh, till it sounds nice. Yeah. 